Okay, in this video, I want to talk about data error detection and data error correction. Now, when we send data over a wireline, like Ethernet, or over a radio link, like these two Bluetooth modules, we want to ensure that the data sent is received with no errors. Now, if I power up my Bluetooth modules, you'll see that they'll pair, and the two LEDs will come on. So they pair together. I have one configured as a master and another one configured as a slave. So now I have a link between these two Bluetooth modules. So I could send data from one module to the other. Now there's some protocols in place that will detect any errors and if there's any errors detected it will ask for a retry. And if it's only single bit errors they'll correct those errors. So, so the two protocols we're going to look at in this video is data error detection which is CRC cyclic redundancy check and data error correction which is forward error correction FEC okay here are the protocols that we're going to talk about in this video for error detection and error correction now the first one is CRC cyclic redundancy check and that's for error detection the second one is FEC that's forward error correction and that's for correcting single bit errors and the third one is interleaving now interleaving works together with FEC and basically what it does, it spreads the data out over in the bitstream. Now if we look at the CRC, or error detection, if we want to send some data, we want to send F881. So we would send F881 and we would tack on one CED on the end of the packet. That's our CRC checksum. Now at the receiving end, they would do the same calculation. And if they get one CED, then they know that the data sent is correct and there's no errors. Now this is a short packet, but you could send a longer packet like this one here. And then at the very end, tack on the checksum, the CRC. Now on short packets it's a lot of overhead and on a longer packet if there's an error you have to send the whole packet. So it's a trade-off between a short packet and a long packet and that's up to the engineer who's designing his project. Now the second one is forward error correction. So for, for every byte that we send we have to tack on four bits which is our parity bits or sometimes called check bits. So you can see here here's the bytes that we want to send and we tack on four bits to, to every byte. So, so a 2.5 would become 2.57, F2 become F2.9. So we're, we're adding on, we're encoding each byte and we're adding on uh, uh, parity bits or check bits. So, so at the receiving end they could do a calculation and they actually could tell if there's any single bit errors in the byte and they actually could correct it without asking for a retry. Now the third one is interleaving. Now interleaving works together with forward error correction and what it does is it, it spreads the data out over in the bitstream, so if there's any burst noise, there'll be a higher chance that the errors will be single bit errors. So you can see here, if we want to send out this data, we would send it out 10110101, and then go to the next one and the next one. But instead of doing that way, instead of going rows, we send it per column. So we would send 10100110, and we would continue on, and we would interleave it. Now at the receiving end, it would de interleave it. And if there was any burst noise, most likely there would be single bit errors. And they would be able to correct it using the, uh, the FEC, the forward error correction. So those are the three protocols that we're going to look at. And we're going to go through some calculations, how you could actually calculate the CRC, FEC, and how we could do interleaving. Okay, here's an example where we could use CRCs. So in a diagram, you can see a radio transmitter on the left. And it has 16 switches. And when the switches are in the up position, that's a, that's a 1. And when it switches in the down position, that'll be a digital 0. And on the right, we have a receiver with 16 LEDs. So what we want to do is send the status of the 16 switches by radio over to the receiver. And the LEDs will light up according to the status of the switches. So what we do, we send the data by radio, which will be F881. That's the position of the switches. And then we send a checksum, 1CED, along with the data packet. So now the receiver can take that CRC and check to see if the data received is valid. Then it could activate the, the, uh, the corresponding LEDs. Okay, before we build our CRC generator, uh, we need a generator polynomial. And there's a lot of them out there, there's a lot of standards. But this is the one I picked here. So it's x to the 16 plus x to the 12, plus x to the 5, plus 1. And that's actually used in the X modem protocol. And that will generate a 16-bit CRC. 
So the first thing we do with that polynomial, we, we expand it and we bring out all the coefficients. And you can see there in the second line, I brought out all the 1 and 0 coefficients. And if you bring that down, if you bring them all down, it forms a 17-bit binary number. And the first thing we do is we truncate the most significant bit, and we're left with 16 bits. And if you change that into a hex, it works out to 1, 0, 2, 1. So that will be our generator polynomial. So we divide the message polynomial, that's our data, by the generator polynomial, which we just saw above here, 1, 0, 2, 1. And the remainder is used to form the CRC bits. So here's our data, F881. That's our message. And we divide it by the 1021 hex. That's our generator. And to do that in a microcontroller, we use XOR, exclusive OR, and shift operations. Okay, next we're going to look on how we can generate a CRC with a microcontroller. So the first thing we do is we assign a 16-bit register to become our CRC register, which we see here. And initialize it all to zeros. Then we assign an 8-bit register to become our data register, as you can see here. And we put our first byte into that data register, which is F8. Then we have a look at the least significant bit of the data register, and have a look at the least significant bit of the CRC register. And if they're the same, then we do a shift right on the CRC register. And we go to the next bit on the data register, we do the same thing. We compare it to the least significant bit of the CRC register. Now, if they're different, then we do a shift right on the CRC, and we exclusive OR it with the hex uh, value 1021, and then put that, put that uh, value back into the CRC register. And we keep on moving along the data register, always comparing it to the least significant bit of the CRC register. And if they're different, we do a shift right of the CRC, and exclusive uh, OR it with 1021 hex, and put, the, put that value back into the CRC register. And after the same, then we just do a shift CRC right. And we do that for the whole eight bits of the data register. After we finished all eight bits of, of the data byte, we put the next one in. So that would be 8-1. And we do the same thing. Now we could do this for multiple bytes until our data is ended. Then whatever we have left in a CRC register will be our 16-bit CRC checksum. Okay, here's the code running on my Nano to calculate CRC checksums. And it's written in fourth, so it's very compact and very fast. You can see my main program is called CRC. So I type in my first byte, my first data byte, F8, and then type CRC. And that'll put the F8 byte into the data byte register. Then there'll be a mask that will be shifted over the data byte to test each bit. So it'll test each least significant bit of the data byte to the LSB of, of the check bits, and they'll do the proper shift if they're the same or different. They'll do either a shift right or a shift right and then exclusive OR1021 with the check bits. You can keep on doing this over and over again until you finish all your data. Then you type dot CRC and that'll print out the checksum. And then it will zero the check bits register ready for the next set of bytes. Okay, I have my CRC generator code running on my Nano. So we could actually enter some, some bytes and generate a CRC. So we'll enter F8, CRC, 81, CRC. And we'll have a look at the checksum. It's one CED. So if they do that calculation on the receive end and they get one CED, they know that the data is, is good and error free. Now there's another way of checking uh, the data. We could actually go in reverse so we go F8, CRC, 81, CRC. Now we enter the CRC that we got in reverse order, ED, CRC, and 1C, CRC. Now when we look at the CRC, it should be zero. So we got zero, so what we did, we went in reverse until we went all the way back to the original value of our checksum register, which was zero. Okay, now you know how to calculate and generate CRCs so give it a try yourself using pen and paper, or you could do it on a whiteboard. And that will give you a good idea how to write code to generate CRCs. Now I have a little radio link here. I have two modules. This is my transmitter module. This is my receiver module. Now this radio link operates on the 900 MHz ISM band. 
and the transmitter puts out about one watt of R of power so we can get a few miles of range of this radio link. Now if you look on the transmitter I can input a 4 to 20 milliamp current loop and on the receiver it will output the same 4 to 20 milliamp current loop. So we could control some industrial devices like a variable frequency drive which would control a three phase industrial motor. We also have contacts. If I close contacts on the transmitter, it will close the corresponding contacts on the receiver. So there's a lot happening here. It's sending a lot of data from the transmitter to the receiver, so it's imperative that we have good data uh, coming into the receiver. So that's where CRCs and FECs come into play. It's a good example where we use this technology. So this is part one of my video. and part two, I'll get into FECs and interleaving. So stay tuned and watch out for part two of this video.